I don't know why I listen to you, I'd have had him. That's why the first one was a decoy. Okay, you call in! 351 from Sierra Oscar, you're receiving, over. Receiving 351. In pursuit of the suspect. Right, come on, son. Lorry Park, theft in Hatter Street, over. 351, cancel that. Bacon reported a car store, junction with Sunnington and Harringay Road. Suspect on premise. 351, investigating now. Stand by! Hurry, hurry, he's in there. Right then, do you know him? What? What I know he's got a knife. A what? A butcher's knife. Sierra Oscar from 351 at Kern's store. The intruder is armed. Right, you're nicked. For far. Thieving from those coaches. May never. 416 to Sierra Oscar receiving over. Go ahead, 416. Suspect apprehended. Priority to assist 351 at Khan's door. Intruder is armed. Armed? But I've got a prison. Right then. All right. Now let's just put the blade away, all right? Look, you don't really want to do this. Keep the milk if you like. Put the blade in the freezer. Yeah? Slime. Out, Mr. Carl. Uh, keep uh, out. Okay, okay. all right. The man has a knife. Quickly. Stay outside. The man has the knife! Has the knife! Tropical blossom, sir. There you go, sir. It's huh? This one's turned up again, Mum. Oh, yeah, right, thanks. Mr. Horton. Still saying nothing? There's nothing to be gained by keeping quiet, you know. All right, take him down the cell. Come on, then. Have a go to him, did he? No, I got there too late, Sarge. I'll tell you what, the old man kid came on with a lot of bottles. There wasn't a lot of choice the way it happened. Don't knock it, mate. Above and beyond the call of duty, I tell I'll you. I'll leave it out with your kin. Shall we have anything to say on the way over? Nah, strong, silent type. All right, then. Get me some paperwork done on it, then, as soon as you change your uniform, yeah? Yes, sir. Right, sir. Oh, yeah, and Ken, Tosh Lines wants to have a word with you about those lorry good thieves. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Something to be grateful for, Bob. Sorry? Malcolm Haynes. Worthy of the mention, I think. It's a bit early. Could be. 
knives. They're getting very numerous. Yeah, not just sunny all these days either, eh? Fat cat belt and all. Mm. Too much money in their pockets, too much booze in their bellies. <laughs> Shocking. Uh, no, I must go. Well, I'll uh, talk later, yeah? Yeah, OK. Oh, what? Bad for an old one. Oh, nice piece of the wicked. Problem? Yeah, noisy one. Hello. We've got jobs to get to. So you're right. You're holding us illegally. Yeah. Like I told that prat who brought us in, just charge us and bail us. You finished? Depends. I'll decide when you're sober enough to be charged, both of you, and that's not yet. Ah, uh, come on. What about our jobs? Look, any more noise or abuse from either of you, then you're for it. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna put the boot in, are you? Oh, it's worse than that. I've got a couple of ripe old winos up there. And one more sound out of either of you, and I'm going to bang you up in there with them. And then you will have something to yell about. Winos, eh? Nice match on the side. Up. Fear, you know. You're safe here. Come on. You've been here before, right? Come on. I'll have those, mate. Come on, little son. No. Come on now. Let me have them, please. Please. Come on. Come on. Nothing's ever worth it. Never. What are you playing at, Taff? Why didn't you take these off him? Well, I thought he'd be off to course in a few minutes. You don't reckon he's a topper, do you? Not while I'm custody sergeant, he isn't. What about his belt? Yes, quite. Now, get it off him. And then I want the doctor to see him soon. In the meantime, you keep your eye on him. So how come at 6.35 you reported a collar? Well, I had him, didn't I? We've been after that tea leaf for weeks. What you need, Melvin, is more gym and less pub. <laughs> you can talk. Watch it. Well, I could hardly leave old Malcolm to get jointed for Smithfield, could I? I'm off to spend the day in court. Vigilance. OK. Horton. Martin John. Got him. There you go, Sarge. Oh, cheers. Martin John Horton. We've got a positive ID for criminal damage and assault a couple of years back. Much else? No. Probation. Wouldn't you know it? That's a soft society for you, isn't it? Depends on the circumstances. Well, so if Chummy had sliced up Malcolm this morning, it would have been circumstantial circumcision. Oh. Is that OK, Sarge? Yeah, as far as it goes. Well, how far do you expect? Man's not saying anything. OK, we'll go for remand on burglary and take it from there, eh? Eh? A burglary? That's what he did. Yeah, but Sarge, it's not as if it was just a... Uh, not... You broke in the back way, heard by this Mr Budget Khan who goes downstairs and finds him noshing up. Plus knife. OK. Khan gets on the telephone, then gets downstairs, opens the front door so that you can pile in. Then when you're radioing in for assistance, Chummy makes his move. You're too right. What about attempted murder? Not the way that Malcolm's written it. Yeah, but it was like a heavy situation, you know, like confused. <sighs> Even so, burglary, Sarge. Have you not heard of a holding charge? Mm. Like further inquiry, Sarge. Divisional surgeon's on his way. And he should get in here in time to have a look at him before he goes to court. Why? Fitness to be detained. So he's mental just because he won't talk? Well, I wouldn't be surprised, and I'm not taking a chance, not in this nick. Right, Martin and John Horton charged with burglary. You two can toddle off back onto the beat. Mum? 
government have a new slogan? Save trees, don't prosecute. We are prosecuting Horton, I trust. No, he's on his way to court now. It doesn't matter if he's a loony or not, he still came at you with a knife. Hi, Val. Nice one. Yeah. Look, Cryer doesn't want to make a big fuss about it. He thinks it's all in a day's work. Yeah, he would. Well, actually, I feel much the same. How can you say that? Press release? Why? Why not? Positive PR. Counter the thump and first and ask questions later, image. Well, bad publicity is best ignored. I don't agree. People don't always want to sling mud. Sometimes they want a hero. So here we have the policeman as hero. A black policeman as hero. Positive PR. Miss Billington, I am not prying, nor am I trying to breach any confidences. As... But if our Joker Horton has been on your books... Yes, but if he has, you know it will make a big difference. Martin John Horton, that's with an H. Born 12-10-58. You got that? Yes, I can hear and I can write. Thank you. No joy? Sorry, Doctor. We'll check it out for you later, maybe. And this is in the spirit of this multidisciplinary cooperation. Well, I'm sorry, but in the absence of any medical history on the man, or any coherent sounds from him, I find it hard to believe. You think he's acting? Who knows? Maybe. Well, can we hold him? Well, he's off to the court now, isn't he? Sure. But afterwards? Oh, yes. Right, thanks, Doctor. Bye-bye. Hello, charge room. Sergeant Cryer speaking. Uh, Tosh, yeah, hello. What's orders, no, the burglary is a holding charge. So get back into the court, sharpish, before they get started, and get the prosecutor to go for a 24-hour remand and to avoid a plea. You got that? Okay, Bobby. Tell him it's a suspected impairment. Uh, yeah, all right, Tosh. Thanks, mate. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Regarding the Melvin Haynes arrest? Not now, please, ma'am. Bob? After the remand hearing, please bear with me. Case number one, Martin John Horton. Uh, application for remand in custody for further inquiries, Your Worship. Relating to the uh, burglary charge? Uh, the inquiries are, in fact, on other matters, Your Worship. Uh, assault with offensive weapon. A uh, butcher's knife. How long a remand? 24 hours. Uh, 24 hours, sir? Your Worship, given the circumstances, I suggest your learned clerk might reasonably refrain from taking a plea. Circumstances? Uh, your Worship, there is a suspicion of uh, impairment. Mr. Mason, you have spoken with Mr. Horton. I've attempted to do so, Your Worship, regrettably in vain. Mr. Horton is not communicative. Mr. Horton, the duty solicitor cannot help you in your defence unless you cooperate. The police are asking to keep you on in the cells for another 24 hours. You are likely to be facing very serious charges. Have you nothing you wish to say? Poison. Pardon? You're poisoning me. All of you. You think I don't know? Doctors, people, pushing poison down my throat. Don't think I don't know. I'm clever. Uh, Mr. Horton, you will be remanded in police custody for 24 hours. Look, it's the doctors! No, please, Mr. Thank you, officer. Take him down. You and all, you're here? I oh, know what you're doing. Killing me. Killing me. You're here? Last I heard, she was talking about a press release. A press release? Why not? Man, I've got enough troubles just being a copper. You get a lot of brownie points, promotion. Bullshit. Yeah, you're right. There's a lot of it about. Yeah. It's 
instead. Coming here? The mountain to Mohammed, eh? No, I didn't mean it like that. Honest. I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Clearing service, eh? You promised a word. Oh, yeah, there's just a few loose ends. The duty solicitor's with Halton now, and there's a social worker on his way with a psychiatrist. So he's a mad knifer. That still doesn't diminish Malcolm's courage in tackling him. With all due respect, you can play station politics. That's down to you. But I don't think we should jump the gun on this. Horton hasn't even had to enter a plea. Nor is he likely to. Because my guess is that he's unfit to plead. I might as well be dead. You know? No, no, no. Well, they'll kill me anyway. You too. Em and all. Nonetheless, Mr. Horton, I'll continue to speak for you in court, if necessary. Thank you, Constable. I could talk to Sergeant Cryer, if I may. Yeah, he's in the custody area, sir. Oh, you finished with Horton, Mr. Mason. I've got the psychiatrist here. Oh, yes, Doctor. It's a conspiracy. There's a sinister plot to poison him. Sounds familiar. He'll be in the interview room with the Constable. Mm. Billington. Are you fit to plead? Not for me to say. The divisional surgeon thinks he might be faking it. That's Dr. Green, of course. Highly experienced and nobody's fool. But not privy to Mr. Horton's psychiatric background. Good. He has a history of paranoid schizophrenia. Which, if anything, underlines PC Haynes' bravery. <sighs> One of those days, eh? Yeah. It starts that tick and gets worse. I'm worse. Swings and roundabouts, mate. Nearly finished, Sarge. Are you ready to toddle off back on the beat? Yeah, before you do that, go and help out in custody, will you? We'll have a cup of tea. Find Sergeant Peters there somewhere. Why me, Sarge? Why not? Sarge, he's not having an easy day, OK? Really? Well, he's just feeling bad because he was off chasing that lorry kid when the call came in. And left you to be a hero on your own, eh? Oh, come on, Sarge, don't be like that. I mean, first he gets slagged off by Tosh Lines because the kid gets away. Yeah, it's a tough life. How airy was it with this Orton bloke? Well, I've got to tell you, Sarge. Swinging that blade, coming at me out of the shadows. Given half a chance, I'd have scarped it off outside and waited for Ken. The fact is, though, Sarge, dark in there, panicky situation. Well, I don't think we ought to push for the assault charge. I can't see myself going on oath over that. Mm. Just resisting arrest, then, eh? Possessing an offensive weapon. Yeah, that's fair. Even if it costs? Eh? Yeah. Commendation. It's on the cards. No way. Out of order, Sarge. Sure? Well, it's not good for recruitment, now. Uh, madam? I need to make a telephone call. Concerning what? A prisoner, actually. And you are? Social services. Look, it's very urgent and very confidential. Is there a problem? I need to use a phone. Oh, well, please come into my office. Thank you. Horton's in a bad way. Incompetent to plead. Oh, cheers, Ike. Uh, will you give him the taff for me? Thanks sure. very much. In that case, I'd better notify the duty solicitor. Hopefully that won't be necessary. All oh, right. 
Miss Billington's friend in the hospital to get Dr. Wayne here. Also to check the availability of a secure unit placing. Dr. Wayne? He's been treating Horton. Oh. An acute psychotic episode, according to Miss Billington, which could very easily have led to a fatal episode. That's putting in a bit strong, isn't it? I'll check the incident detail with Haynes. There's no assault. In any event, it's hypothetical. Assuming Dr. Wayne agrees, we'll have him away from here by lunchtime on a hospital order. I'll drink to that. No secure units available? Maybe tomorrow, but probably the next day. Another triumph for the health service cutbacks. Classic. Meanwhile, I'm terribly sorry, Leave but... Leave the problem with us. Thank you, anyway. Sarge. Yeah? That custody review, it's all for you. Oh, Which? Right. Uh, two rowdies sobering up. Rest of when? Mm, about 5.20. Well, then review is overdue. Well, give or take a minute. Now, then. Oh, Kevin, thanks. Uh, go and find Malcolm and get yourself back outside, eh? Right, sir. We're being held illegally. Yeah. We want a lawyer. When the custody officer deems you are both sober enough, you will be interviewed with statements with a lawyer if you wish, not before. Oh, we've been here for hours. The arresting officer is unavailable, ma'am, but we have his report. Then I think we may proceed. Right. Thank you. You sure you want a lawyer? Be more delay. Just get on with it. Right. Get on with it. You see that that's half, will you? Two in the same cell. Accommodation pressure. The regulations are quite specific, Bob. Well, ten of the six won't go. Mere drunken disorderly. Probably threatening behaviour and criminal damage. Of? In possession of two VW badges. Six hours detention, Bob, no matter how disorderly, is no reason to run us, me, into breach of pace. Point taken, then. Can I have a word, please, Mum? Yes, madam come in. Sit down. It's about this press release, ma'am. I want you to know how very pleased I am about it. It gives us something to be proud of for a change. Yes, ma'am, but it wasn't... I wouldn't want to push for an assault charge, ma'am. More like resisting arrest, yeah? Come on, Malcolm. I wouldn't expect false modesty from you. You did very well. You must take the credit. I feel like I'm being used. How do you mean, exactly? Well, would you put out a press release if it was anybody else? I don't think so. Malcolm, you are a serving officer with the Metropolitan Police Force. It is your duty to give the job a positive image with the public. And we especially need to improve our image with the black public. We need more black recruits. Your personal sensitivities must take second place. This is inner London in the 1980s. We've got to use every advantage we've got. And if you bring these journalist people down here... How do you know I'll say what you want me to? I rely on your sense... Look, ma'am, I may be the only black you've got. I can live with her. But I'm not going to be a pawn in anybody's game. It's the love of you, Mr. Go get the dock. Sorry, I just didn't think about it. 